Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem and I often use tiny electronic parts to make sometimes tiny projects. But in this video we are making a device that helps us make tiny details of other things. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. In a previous episode, I've made a little racing game with a 555 timer versus Arduino. You remember that? And I made a little scenery to race my car on. And I've used a static grass applicator to give it a more realistic detailed look to make all the little tiny grass fibers stand up and look like real grass. And I've asked you if you want to see a video on that device that I used it because it's homemade. And yep, turns out a lot of you asked for a dedicated video and that is this video. So what is this static grass I was talking about? Well, it's the tiny details on models like this here. There's a little diorama of a certain Lovecraft book and you can see there is really tiny bushes of grass and they are not just flat, they are standing up like real grass. And those are made from nylon fibers. So that's basically a colored waste product of the textile industry. And to make them stand up, we can't just pick each one by hand and glue them upright. We need some more sophisticated methods, also faster ones, because if I would do that all with individually gluing them down, uh, I wouldn't be finished until the end of the universe. So we're building a static grass applicator that uses an electrical charge with many, many hundreds of volts to make those stand up on their own until they are fixed in place with some glue. Who uses a static grass applicator? Well, everybody that has to do with model making in general could use such a device, especially model train enthusiasts, war gamers, D&D aficionados, and even architects. My main focus is if somebody like an architect wants to visualize his concept in a better way for the client, I take his designed architectural model and I make the scenery around it so it looks more like the realistic thing that he proposes to build. So that helps people convey the look of something a bit better than just a plain field of emptiness. So how does this static grass thing work? Basically you need to charge up the little fibers with hundreds or even thousands of volts and have a potential difference to the object that you want to cover or that you want to attach the fibers to. So the fibers themselves get positively charged and the object has to be negatively charged or it just has to have a potential difference. So they can't be at the same state, they have to be different. Why? Because I want to create a magnetic field line between them and make the fibers align to them. Uh, look at this analogous model, that's not exactly the same way how it works, but it helps understand. Uh, let's say this blue part here is a fiber. I have put it on an axle so it can freely move. And this magnet here is the field line that the fiber, the charged one, wants to align to. It now has a bolt in there which represents the charge. And if I bring the magnetic field close, it gets attracted and goes wherever the field goes. So it will align to the field and if it happens to be upright because the potential difference is on the top and I will fix it in place with glue at the bottom, it will keep its position when the magnetic field is no longer there or the potential difference is no longer there. Yeah, and that's how these things get glued in place. Of course, they are not always perfectly straight, they are a little crooked to the side. And the mixture of positions is what gives it is the, the realistic grass-like look. So you want to have variants in there. Also, some people tease them a little bit to make it look a bit more uh, realistic. But the main thing is you don't want it to lay flat, you want it to stand up. So why would you want to build a static grass applicator yourself and not just buy one? They are available, they can get a bit pricey and there are cheap DIY options out there. And I want my build to be like in the middle of the road, 
not as pricey as a store-bought one, but not as flimsy cheap as the cheapest versions that you find on the internet. I want mine to be sturdy so I can use it for many years and I also want it to have some aspects about the cable and stuff to make it cater to my needs. So I want the fibers more concentrated on little areas and I want to have a cable for the grounding clip that is a little bit easier to use and stays out of the way. So we are going to build like the beefy sturdy version but all the techniques you see apply to all of these versions. This is basically how also the commercial units work. So what do you need for this project? Uh, we need a voltage source. In my case, I want this to work with a nine volt battery to have it wireless and also have the ability to use a wall ward adapter with nine volts. So I buy those. I need input jacks for that. I want to use a jack that has a little switch inside so it automatically switches voltage sources whenever there is the uh, wall adapter present. So I don't have to flick any other switches like with some commercial units. I want it to have a really nice power button with illumination so I exactly know when the high voltage potential is present because you can shock yourself with that and it hurts. So I want to be always informed when the unit is active or not. So status LED is critical. Also, it limits the current on the supply side. I need a high voltage transformer to make the low nine volt uh, with pretty high amperage into a very high voltage with very low amperage. Therefore, I need a transformer. In this case, we need not just any transformer. We need a special transformer that first converts low voltage into very high voltage, but also transformers only work on AC. So as you know, they block DC. You could uh, transmit information over a transformer without connecting the voltages together to avoid sparks and potential differences. But that also makes them not work for DC voltages. But in the end, I want to have DC. So first we need a way to turn the DC into AC, build a transformer, and then convert that back into DC to gain our high voltage potential. One aspect that I really want to change about my old setup is the flimsy cables. They are getting in the way. They don't stay in the shape that I want them to be out of my way when I work with them. So I decided to use the best cable I know of. This is LAP cable Ulflex, available on Element 14. And this is like, the best machine cabling and it's not that expensive and I only need about one meter of that or even like lower than one meter but you can buy them in one meter increments online and this allows me to have a very flexible cable that keeps its shape when I move it into a shape like this bow here so it stays out of my way whatever I do because I know a lot of people that could use a static grass applicator won't have a 3D printer at home. This time I will not use 3D printing at all. I'm using sewer pipes for the case. This is the cheapest option for me. I can get them at the hardware store and those PVC pipes that the American makers like to use are not a thing around here, but you may have an even cheaper option at your hardware store. So check them out. What you need is about 50 millimeters in diameter, any pipe and end caps for that. Uh, I use two muff type uh, 50 millimeter sewer pipes and four end caps for that to make them completely watertight to make sure that my electronics compartment is completely sealed against the compartment that holds the fibers and also is sealed against any charge difference. I want sparks, if they happen, to happen between my grounding clamp and the business end of my device and not in between uh, parts of my circuit inside the device. Hi, I'm David from Element 14 to the Electronics Inside. Join me as I tear down toys, tools, appliances, modern, vintage, classics, and even some new releases just to find out what's inside. You 
you've heard about the high voltage transformer, let's talk about transformers. First thing you need to know is there are a lot of options to build such a high voltage transformers yourself and there are a lot of pre-made options. If you buy a pre-made option, always be very critical with what you buy. If you get them at reputable sources, then that should not be to worry, but try them out first before attaching them to the device so you know exactly what they deliver. If you buy them cheaply on dodgy sources online, be very aware that uh, some sellers might use the numbers and uh, phrases that make them sell those devices, not necessarily what they're actually doing. Here is a high voltage transformer that I bought online that was rated for 12 volts according to the data sheet. And here you can see what happens when I put 9 volt into it. Magic smoke. This is not up to the task and it's yeah, not the one that I want to use. So the next option of course is making your own transformer. What do you need for that? First you need to have a primary coil and a secondary coil. The primary coil is a piece of copper wire and you have to know the ratio those coils have to be different to get the desired voltage. Uh, the formula is N1, coilings of the primary, divided by N2, coil windings of the secondary. And that gives you a ratio and that ratio should apply to the voltage. So I want to turn my 9 volts into 300 volts. I just approximate that. So it's a ratio of 0.03. So I need 10 turns on the primary and 300 turns on the secondary. My primary is just made from an inductor I had in my parts bin. I've made 10 turns around the original uh, ferrite core of this inductor, then isolated it with some heat shrink tubing and started coiling. There are a lot of different wire gauges for that. I didn't want to use very thin wire for that because that is what in the dodgy uh, transformer that blew up. So I want to have a little bit more leeway with the currents that are happening inside there. So I use a little bit thicker wire that I have enough of in my uh, storage and I start coiling up my secondary and it gets pretty big pretty quickly. Attaching an AC signal to it lets me uh, consult my oscilloscope to see, yes, there is a transmission happening, uh, but on closer inspection, it's just too big to fit inside my desired space. So if you want to make your own transformers, be aware they can get very big very quickly. To get this project done in time, I've used the pre-made module, the one that I used in my old machine. This old machine had some shortcomings, the flimsy wires, uh, the not very well isolated terminals. So if you're not careful, you could shock yourself pretty easily with that. I want to avoid that. I want to have my hands away from any high voltage potential and I don't want sparks to happen inside. Usually on the commercially available high voltage transformers, especially on those that have a DC-AC conversion built right inside them, they have a plastic case and they are filmed with a little mass, mostly made of uh, polyurethane or other resins, that makes sure that there are no unwanted contacts and it's perfectly isolated. If you make your own versions or if you have to repair something, you can buy that stuff online. It's available on Element 14. Just so you know, I bought a packet of that just in case I need to insulate my project further. I've mentioned that I want the voltage switching to be happening automatically. Uh, but I forgot to order the right barrel jack for that, so I'm using a 3.5 millimeter audio jack and a 3.5 millimeter audio plug, of course, and modify my wall ward so it works with that. Uh, never do that. <laughs> Always use the correct pieces. It will hold up the current and voltages, no problem. Uh, but audio jacks should be used for audio applications and those barrel jacks should be used for barrel check application so everybody that might get a hold of that device instantly know what that port is for.
this time we have no code that's purely analog electronics. So let's go right into the demonstration segment. For the purpose of this video I have to make the demonstration a bit brief if you want to see the full process on how this diorama uh, is made and see all the steps I've put a bonus video on the Element 14 community where you see the long version basically. My static grass applicator turned out better than I thought. <laughs> it's a lot better than the older dodgy version that I had. I, I was pretty aware of the risk of shock that I was exposed to. And now with this one, it's pretty safe to use. Still, you can shock yourself. There are sparks flying uh, if your probes come close to each other and they would hurt. But I can keep my hands in a safe distance along the cable and still have total control over it. And also all the electronics and the high voltage side especially is completely encased in this pretty cheap and but useful enclosure. Turned out a lot better than my old version and I hope you have use for your version too. If you want to recreate all our projects, we have files, code and all the stuff that you need and some extensive videos on the Element 14 community. Join us there. And I gotta go. There's another project waiting for me.